So, as you touched on, map veto. Find out where we're actually going to play this match. And Empire on defense, lock it on attack. Looks like we won't be going to Clubhouse or Consulate as those were the matches where maps played last time for these teams. It's going to be Border, it seems. Interesting that we'll be going to uh, Border. That's always nice to see that map played. Border, a really well-balanced map in uh, Siege Competitive. Uh, it's one of the first maps to be seen as like a staple in the competitive scene um, and often referred to as, uh, I'd say, one of the more loved maps in Siege. Yeah. Border also tends to play out on certain sites in a very predictable manner, which is something worth noting, is that both of these teams can be quite unpredictable. We have seen the playmaking potential that both Karzeka as well as Joystick have. And Joystick, 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 a name that you will hear many, many times in Europe as the Ash Jaegermain. And what he is capable of doing on Border is nothing short of incredible. Now, we've seen flashes of brilliance in terms of playmaking from Mocket. They moved KS off of the Ash. They can put him back on if they need to. Of course, this is Mocket with Kryan coming onto the roster and Baka Brian being moved off. So there's still some turmoil in terms of roles and all that for Mocket that they're going to need to smooth out. It's much smoother sailing for Empire. You got it right in the last matchup. You thought Penta was going to win, and by Jove, you did it. This time around, well... You think that it's going to be Empire, and I think that's a pretty good choice. They definitely come in as the favorites, and if they don't fall to mock it, they will continue to be Europe's only undefeated team and will continue to climb up those standings in the first place. I mean, so far today, we have seen one undefeated team go defeated, so it's possible that we could see a second. Mock it might finally wake up. We'll find out as we load into Border. So, with Empire starting on defense, mock it on attack, we will go right into the ban phase. Very likely to see a hard breacher here as we usually do on border. At least one, usually Thermite, possibly Habana taken out. If not, then it's going to be a really interesting match when you have all of those hard breachers available. Not the most important, not, not the end all be all on border. We're not talking about clubhouse, but it is always interesting. And Glad is going to be the first ban out. He has been banned first in every match so far today, regardless of the team. He is someone I don't think anyone wants to play against. No. This makes an awful lot of sense here, taking Glass out, and, well, you ban Ash. Not she's, surprising. She's a 25% ban rate, and all of those are coming against Empire. But now Mocket has a secondary ban. You could technically take out Jaeger and see if he could possibly frag on Bandit, but I would imagine, there you go. Echo and Maestro are just too strong to leave on the board at this exact moment. And I think yeah. that that's probably a wise choice to take care of Echo. I would guess this will probably be a Mira ban. And then we see Mira, Echo, and Glaz have been banned. Uh, well, Echo, actually, this is his first ban. It's been Maestro twice. But yeah. Mira and Glaz have been banned all throughout the day. Europe really hates their fellow countrywoman, Amira. So... It sounds like we will be having a rehost, and uh, we will get back into the match as soon as possible, hopefully. Finding out just now what exactly the problem is, and we'll let you know as soon as we do. Hi there. So we're just going to go to a, a very quick, uh, a very quick rehost, and then uh, we'll go back into the game. Um, interestingly enough. Um, Interestingly enough, uh, we'll go back into the game. Okay. Um, well, back into the match. And, uh, all right, so operator selection. We've got a Blitz and a Ying, as well as a Dokubi, so you can see that there's a clear emphasis being placed on disruption for the attackers, for uh, Mocket. So name is, uh, see, there it is. Team Empire will be putting uh, a lot of Emphasis on that uh, counter disruption, though. It's quite interesting, actually. Team Empire, whether they know it or not, have very directly countered the way that Mocket has chosen to select their operators. I don't know what the six pick was, so I don't know if it was deliberate from Team Empire. Um, but uh, they're light on the information ops on the defensive side, but they're heavy on counter operators like Smoke, like Legion. So that's going to do well against things like the Blitz and the potential rush from uh, Rips on that uh, 
Ying. The Blitz was the six pick from Corey, so Blitz's okay. presence will not be known by Empire, but lucky for them, well, they do happen to have a lesion, which will slow that operator down quite a bit. So, moving on to the attack, it looks like Mach is going to start things off with a CCTV clear. Definitely sensible, as they can get a good chunk of ground and then start their push straight into sight. There is no pulse on the enemy team, and look at that. Corey knows how to press the C button. He's figured it out. He's going to rush his way into CCTV, knowing that it is clear thanks to Bale's drone and moving his way up to the armory wall. It was good clear so far from Mocket. No challenge at all from Empire. It's almost nauseating to watch. Corey Just still up and down. Still knows how to press the C button. Almost, and, almost completely seasick. Wow, that's fantastic. We saw this at Rio, to be fair. Corey was doing this as well, uh, I believe, on Ash. So. Can, we, can we not the first person on him? Almost, it almost, <laughs> it, it almost Sorry. does give you a headache. It, it does. Yeah. It really does almost give you a headache. So, all right. This is going to be an armory side take. I wonder if we're going to see Vale rotate on over to office. No, he's going to stay inside of CCTV and just use some soft destruction to uh, open up the, uh, the CCTV wall or inside of security. So, EMP's going off, and that'll disable some things available here as Empire have very, very fallen very, very far back. And Machin has complete control of Armory side. Rips just absolutely paralyzing the defense. Joystick is down, and Mocket are just in. KS will figure out exactly where Joystick is. Corey with a kill, and Diffuser going down quite successfully. This was very fast for Mocket as they're just racking up kills, and it's going to be all left to Shockwave, who's just waiting for somebody to push him. You see a down on Rips as, well, the phone's going to get silenced from Shockwave, but he's got a timer, and this will expire very quickly. A good peek from KS is met by a very good read from Shockwave, but it's Cryon holding an angle and mocking to take round one in a hurry. Yeah, hurry is right. Clearly the strategy there from Mock, it was just the, uh, the plain rush and they executed it very well. Um, they had all of the right tools for the job. So props to uh, Mock it for bringing that kit. Uh, Empire's counterplay was a little bit lackluster. They also had some great ut uh, utility to try and counter a rush specifically, but it just wasn't utilized properly on the Empire side of things. Because of that, they will be going back to Armory. Not much more to talk about there. It was a simple rush strategy, and uh, yeah, keeping it simple, but it works on Mocket's side. Props to them for that. So I'm surprised that we're actually going to be sticking with the uh, with the Blitz here. Like I said, it was six Attackers picked onto. I figured what we were going to see was that Corey was going to switch off of it. Yeah, you six pick into something else. Six pick, and then, yeah, and then you go with the Blitz, and they say, okay, they're bringing the Blitz again, and then you change the Blitz to something else. But, I mean, if it worked, why not go with it a second time? It's going to be back upstairs inside of Armory, so... I mean, yeah, there's potential for another rush. Might as well try the exact same thing and see if it works. Maybe they'll rush from the B-bomb site instead. Um, there's a lot of options for rush strategies on this site, but uh, we'll see. I mean, especially with those smokes on KS, you could easily isolate the back of archives and get that, uh, that plant behind smoke cover. Overall, Empire opening up quite a lot of holes here, as you can see, to try and keep control. From, uh, from below upstairs, if they're going to roam anyone down, or just trying to isolate those rooms, play aggressive angles so that nobody can uh, deny the bandit batteries on the armory wall. Either way. These pre place sites are just in case Bocket does decide to switch things up and put a soft destructor underneath a buck, for example, and Ash of Zofia. You can tell from Mocket's lineup that none of those are there. The way that Mocket is setting up, this is going to be a very linear push. Whether it's going to be office side or whether it's going to be armory side, it's pretty obvious from Mocket that there's not a ton of versatility. This is very much Blitz, Ying, and Dokubi. All right, get in, make them hurt, and then lock it down. It's a bit of a mind game, Claymore, there from Vale. Uh, clearly expecting somebody who's pushing up those stairs not to be looking at the bottom of the stairs. You might be right in that assumption. So instead of it being an armory take, they're lined up over on offices, so... I mean, this is what we expected, some kind of shift, but maybe similar strategy, just a different location. Corey's got his finger on the C button again. Dear God. Yeah, he's he really is going for... I'm not sure what the thought process is there exactly. Maybe he moves a little bit faster because he's, you know, sometimes standing, but that also his feet are covered because he's sometimes got a shield covering his feet. 
because he's sometimes crouching. Not entirely sure, but once again, Corey and the rest of Mocket very close to being able to push on in. One Toxic Babe, or Toxic Canister rather, is goes off and will stop the push in towards Archives. You can see one Exothermic Charge from Vale will open up the Fountain Wall, and that will be the Legion of Shockwave who has to fall off, lest he confront a Blitz head on. Does have a chance to still sit inside of Archives, though, and toss out his Legion Mines, those Goo Mines, at any chance, which will slow the Blitz down. Vale's going to need to move over to try and get the wall in office, though, one of which is completely soft. Oh, it's a great opportunity from Joystick. He'll collect one on the Cryon, but get shut down from Vale who loses a lot of his HP. Low enough that Vale could possibly fall to an evil eye, Michael. It's a smoke that's gonna go off and the Blitz will push in. He takes some damage, Rips gets picked up. And you'd have to imagine that we have now passed the mid round. There's a good chance for an execute here. Scyther will take out both Vale and Rips. Those were the two members of Mocket who were very, very low. This is a great rebuff from Empire. Corey. Still spamming that C button, trying to push his way into B, going for the ADS, but not able to land the shot. Scyther playing incredibly safe behind the actual bomb. Gas canisters go out, but the melee from Corey will land. Shock dies to, or actually gets a kill onto Chaos using that Goo Mine, and Karzeka is able to get the final kill. Empire take that round quite dominantly, thanks to the C4 from Scyther. It looked like in the first round that Mocket attacking Armory was a good choice. Not just because of the lineup that they had, but also because Empire was far more invested in an Archives take. This time around, Mocket pushes in to an Archives defense, which is exactly what Empire was expecting this time as well. I think that's correct. They take Armory first round. It's unlikely that the exact same thing is going to happen. There's a good chance for it. And I mean, it could have worked. You could have tried Armory again to catch them flat-footed. But Empire, I think Empire expected an Archives take, and that's exactly what happened, and they stopped them very well. Yeah, I think it was definitely the wrong call for Mocket to try and go for Archives. We theorized that it might be possible at the beginning of the round. Need to locate uh, in fact, maybe a good idea, but clearly not, as uh, that round displayed. Well, I think a big part of that is that they had a very uh, aggressive lineup in their operators, but weren't able to use them properly because there was too many layers of defense established by Empire because, as you said, it's likely that Empire expected that rotation. Also, that C4. That was huge. That was crippling. That was huge, yeah. The C4 uh, the C4 got tossed over, and you could see that the Ying was trying to protect Vale as Vale was trying to get the wall inside of Archives. And the moment that you can't get that off as Archives wall and you have to go through the singular doorway, well, that's going to be a problem. The good thing that was working for Mocket was that they had exhausted all of the toxic canisters from Shepard. There were still goo mines littered inside of the site, and then two bodies to take them down when the vault from the Dokubi happened on defense. Rips, going to be the first here on the clear. He's looking for some targets, but there's nobody going for the spawn peaks. They're very predictable on border. Nobody shot the speaker just yet, so remember, if you're seeking medical attention. <laughs> if you play this game, by the way, and you shoot out the speaker that plays that message, casters will love you, just as a side note. Yeah, uh, to all professionals on border. I and not even professionals. If you're in amateur leagues, if you're playing in Go Force for community casters, doesn't matter what you're doing. If there is an audio cue that can be shut off, the clubhouse, uh, jukebox for example the speaker on border shoot them out because we hear them one bullet and it's that's all it takes that's all it takes you spawn you shoot it it's done and we thank you and we say thank you in this round we're seeing a clear into offices again from market but this time the site is in vent so it's going to be a little bit of a different strategy from market and they're going to be a lot less resistance here on this top floor which is fantastic for them getting this early control on archives and offices is free and easy and very useful. You can see that Empire has set themselves up well in Armory, so they're not going to give this away quite as easily. But they've already given away quite a lot of control. So that first round was very fast for Mocket. The second round was a little bit slower, and the third round is almost painfully slow as Mocket has really struggled to assert themselves and not grab really any map control so far. They will grab one of those castle barricades as it blows up, just heading on over towards bathroom. This is a very default castle setup that we're seeing from Empire. A lot of teams used to run this. It's a strategy that you see an awful lot in basically every level of, of competitive play. Yeah. 
Corey looking to push his way into the bathroom. He's the optimal operator for this as he's got that shield and the smokes to cover his ingress. But the gas canisters are doing a good job at delaying the blitz even more. I don't know if that smoke grenade from Corey was intentional. It went through the bottom of the wall, which means that the actual smoke that's playing inside a bathroom has a massive advantage because he's not going to be cut off. Shock will get the very first kill as he takes down Veil. The hard destructor is off the board for Mocket. They're not running any secondary hard breach. So the Thermite will be the only member and the most important part. Rips a very good heads up play through the wall onto Scyther, possibly coordinated or just simply good game sense. And Mocket will try to close this gap. Taking out the pulse as well is a major boon. Shepard's gonna be completely blinded and well, he is completely dead as well as Mocket will put on two on the board. But Joystick is there. Always Joystick. Always watching. Gets the pings. He drops. He doesn't see the second body. He'll miss the shot. And Cryon will clean up with Corey on the Blitz. Running in and Shockwave being the very final casualty on Empire's side of things. You can't stop the shielded operator. And Mocket will take their second round, giving Empire another opportunity to go back to Vents and Workshop for yet another time. Definitely a serious miscalculation there at the end by Joystick. He could have just played on the drop and maintained full sight control. There was no reason to drop, but he committed, and it almost worked out for him. It's a shame for him and his team and all of his team's fans that uh, Cryon was there to clutch it out, along with Corey, who made a very long rotation all the way over to the other side of the bomb site. Able to get the castle for the final kill. Good job to Maki winning that one. About as close as it gets, though. A few seconds more, and the Empire would have been able to take that. They'll go back to ventilation, and we've seen two repeats now of two different sites. Second attempt on Armory, Empire was successful. Will they be able to take the second attempt on ventilation is the question. Looks like they're going to be investing upstairs yet again. And they will be bringing a castle as well. So probably a similar setup here from Empire to the previous one. Yeah, I'd guess so. Mm -hmm. I don't really see much out of the Maestro uh, so far. It's true. The, I mean, well, to be fair, the Thatcher pick from Cryon has been excellent. You've seen that a couple of the EMPs have been used exclusively to take the evil eyes out, which not just can't tase you, but also robs Empire of that information. We've had a distinct lack of soft destruction and any sort of destruction that can take out an evil eye is important to note. Um, so those those EMPs are even more important. Oh, hello. Oh, look at this. Logic bombs off and Corey's inside of sight, but a great answer from Empire as they collect two kills on a Mockets fast push. And Blitzkrieg is gonna go nowhere in a hurry. It's good gambit. Both your Heart Breacher and your Blitz are down. Rips has a huge magazine in that LSW, but will not find a target as the iron sights of the CZ75. A little bit too difficult for Chaos to imagine. manage. Scyther with two big kills. He'd already gotten one earlier on as Rips is also now prone by the window. And what does he see? Joystick. And Joystick sees him as well, but Joystick will be uh, taken off the board. So he watches from above. Rips anticipating a jump out onto vents and two minutes left. You've got two Candelas left. You've got Breach Charges. I think it's worth noting is that there's a distinct lack of soft destruction on Mocket, but they've been running Breaches on both the Ying and the Thatcher. It's just, can't really use those on an evil eye. It's not, yeah, it's not the right <laughs> kind of soft destruction. Yeah. And it's not the sort of soft destruction. What a shot from Rips. Beautiful. He has been landing his shots, but it's not going to be enough against Karzeka. On top of that server stack for the whole round, and able to do some serious work for his team. That's Karzaka's position here, position here rather, was a big part of why Empire were able to win that round. And now we have seen a repeat. Armory, first time, not so much for Empire. Second time's the charm. Same thing here on ventilation. And we will, because of that, have a nice even 2-2 two -two round count. It's going to be going back up to Armory for Empire's next defense. An important thing to note, about border is that there's two really good sites and then there are two okay sites. Customs was better when there weren't operator bans. True. I, I felt like customs was much easier to defend when there were not those operator bans. But now that we see that there are up bans, well, especially Mira, customs is very tough. And the only real successful defense is that Attack I feel like we've seen of customs lately bomb. have revolved around really aggressive roaming and then Quirky frost plays on the windows inside of CCTV. Yeah. Or monitors, as it's often called. I mean, 
there's definitely ways to win it, but you have to do things unconventionally. If we're talking about conventional, easy to defend, well, not easy to defend, but defensible sites, then, yeah, the, or defendable sites, yeah. then we're, we're talking about arm reinventilation. And it's, in a way, because of that, not the end of the world that Empire have dropped two rounds because they're going to get to go yeah, to their like regular that. sites for every round. Well, actually, no, that's not true. They win here, they're going to have to go to somewhere other than ventilation, so a little bit of a mismatch there, but at the same time... You win armory, and then you probably go to customs, and then you hope that you emerge yeah. with, at worst, a draw. But you're expecting, yeah, a 3-3 three, three yeah. in this half. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Now it is dependent on Empire winning here, and if they don't, then they get to go to armory again, so potentially still a 3-3. Three, three. We're looking at a 3-3 three, three in this half. That's that's the probability. Probable outcome here. Mocket gonna be pushing into CCTV, same way they did the first time they attacked this bomb site. So they've gotten wise to their office take not working out. But you know what else has happened? Shepard has rotated onto a clash, which could be really good for this. The six pick from Mocket was smart to go from the Blackbeard over to the Blitz. Once again, trying to obfuscate the lineup that they had and what they were trying to accomplish. But the big thing that Team Empire understands, and they understand it quite correctly is that you need to be able to slow down Empire. Corey just is wasting these flashes, by the way, on yeah. the Blitz for no particular reason. They're very and, limited. And yeah, you get four of them, and Corey has managed to hit the Clash with it three times. He's lost about 25 HP in the process. The Clash is still all there. And when Corey does go to push, he's only gonna have one Flash available. You gotta imagine he got frustrated with the Clash. Oh, I mean, Clash is frustrating to deal with, especially when you yourself are a shield. Still slow going, and why is that? Because the Clash is still in play. Managed to do quite a lot of damage to Corey already. It's gonna start doing some to the Ying, but when this burst eventually happens from Mocket, you gotta bet it's going to be a doozy. Here it comes. And the push in from the Blitz. Logic Bombs, this is all playing out so similar to what we've seen many, many times. Karzeka in the wall in small office. Corey will use his final flash as he plays inside a sandwich, relying on the rest of his team to deal some damage. But it'll be Empire who gets the first punch, landing it on Necryon, and followed up with a kill on the Rips with Shock there. This is a lockout from Empire as it's all up to Veil. We'll just watch very proudly the work that he's done under the armory wall as he's going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the entire team of Empire. And especially a Clash, you can just slow you down and make it so that you really don't have anything to do. This is where frustration is going to sit in, as there's no counter here from yeah. Vale. He doesn't have any flashes available. He ran with the Claymore instead. And because of this, he's just going to haul and get out of there. <laughs> Notice the Clash is still there. Who will rotate into CCTV? I can't say swear words on the broadcast. I just had to finish it at Hall, you know? You're not allowed to do that, probably. You're not allowed. You can't say swears. So. You can say butt. You can't. He, he hauled butt. I don't think that sounds very appropriate. No. Vale's still inside a break room. He's going to run in. It's a 1v5, and this is an easy victory for Empire. Scyther prone on the ground. We'll find Vale. All that information being relayed from the clash that was inside of monitors, and Empire will take the lead. So I got I to gotta give massive props to Empire for, uh, for that rotation. Deciding to bring the clash was a really good decision, as it turns out, and uh, the perfect counter to how Mocket were playing. On top of the clash, though, you also saw Team Empire uh, conscientious of the uh, the ying and how it was being played, and how they needed to play to counter that apart from just the clash. What I mean by that is that Empire were pretty far away from that armory wall. Nobody was playing by half wall. Nobody was playing in sandwich. They were all playing on the other side of sandwich in lockers. They were they had one person in small office. That's the most extended person in the entire defense overall. Empire were extremely safe, waiting for the initial burst from the Candelas to happen, from the Blitz, etc. And then once that was, once that had dissipated, they had done well to deny the plant of the diffuser and were able to retake into the site with no pressure on Empire's shoulders. So well done to them, reading that round correctly. Uh, and that's two armory defenses that they've read the attack of Mocket perfectly and countered it perfectly. The first one, of course, being when uh, Mocket went for the attack from offices and, and Empire was there to counter that push. Now, it's going to be customs, so this is what we talked about. The likelihood of Empire winning this is pretty low. Mocket very likely to take this one, push themselves to 3-3 on the half. Have a bomb. But there is still potential for victory for Empire here. And if they manage to put it to 4-2, then that is a really good outcome for the half on Empire's side. And they could be pretty confident going to the second half. Attackers are heading out to the 
it's going to be an intriguing sight to see. Obviously, customs will work for uh, some teams and not for others. For Empire, once again, running this castle strat that, like you noted, very limited soft destruction that needs to take out Evil Eyes can be applicable to castle barricades as well. I mean, we saw some cases where Maka were putting breaching charges on castles and were sh sh shot in the foot. Shot in the foot. The foot. The foot. I don't they were, know they were indeed like shot in the foot. I don't know why I said it like that. I feel like that's how Canadians say foot. I think it was, uh, my jaw was popping. It's a self joke. 40 seconds and Mockets is just gonna go for broke yet again. They okay. really love trying to catch Empire off guard. Amidst the Shroud of Smoke will be Vale getting the plant down. And inside a small office, Rips intending to find his target. Huge magazine, by the way, and he'll get it. Another successful defuse will go down in Mockets' favor. This is the right way to really play this side, is just go for broke here, because you can't have Empire be able to take that map control. Corey will smite Shockwave with his shield, and phone's ringing away as it looks like, oh, oh no, you no. don't see the Thermite! Almost a successful transfer from Scyther, as Karzeka and Mocket will trade off. It's a 2v3 in favor of Team Empire. Time working against them. No information whatsoever. Kryon is there to grab one inside a passport. Karzek is going to jump out, but the Tokabi will pull out the C75 after switching off of the DMR. Mocket will salvage that half. A valiant effort on behalf of Empire, but it will fall just short. It's Chaos and the rest of his team with some post-plant heroics. And we'll send it over to Mocket's defense. There's very little presence there from Team Empire by break room, which was where I, I believe they needed to be playing above the site to try and deny that plant. The smokes had good cover for the horizontal, but they were still, the planter was still exposed vertically, and there was potential for denial. But Empire were just not in position, not expecting that push to be so quick into that round from Mocket. Now as we transition to the second half, we're going to see a six pick off of the Clash. They're just trying to make Empire think that there's a shield on the defense. I think it's smart. If you can do it, we can do it too, but then they're not actually doing it. So uh, Empire won't have to worry about it, but they will be worrying about it until they know they don't. Now, going up to Armory, going to be a pretty standard lineup overall here for Market. They've got all the tools they need. they got the Bandit for the Bandit tricking. It's almost the same lineup that was being brought up by Empire every round as well. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense. you got the Jaeger for the, to counter as many grenades as possible. On the other team, you've got a Thatcher to counter the Jaeger. You've got an IQ to counter the uh, the Jaeger. And the Legion and all the other potential electronics. Yeah. I mean... Legion is so strong right now and just fits into every composition. Legion just works. Every composition, every map. I mean, there's certain maps where he's more powerful than others. Yeah. But uh, he can be used anywhere at any time. I and mean, that's really what makes him so powerful. It's like if, if Cap can, but, but better though. Way better. Yeah. He is in a lot of ways a superior Capkin. Obviously his traps don't do as much damage, but he might actually be better at information finding than uh, I think so. than, than Capkin is for sure. And, and, that guy did a great job with both those camera struggles with the barricade, by the way. <laughs> I think in terms <laughs> of just pure information, Legion is, is is the best trap operator in my mind. He's one of the best operators in the game. His gun is pretty good, he's a two speed, he's got impacts, he can generate eight yeah. traps. It's a lot. It, it's a lot. They're and invisible, by the way. They are also invisible, and they can deny the ability to plant. They deny your ability to run. He does so many things, and is just very strong. And that's why it's very similar to Zofia. Both of those operators, they just have so much that they do in comparison to others. I probably shouldn't say invisible camouflage. Technically, you can see the silhouette, but it's very faint. We're gonna move on. It's very similar to the Echo Drum. Empire is clearing their way into office. Or at least they're trying to. They're meeting some fierce resistance, though. You can see over by Fountain, you still have one of the defenders that's crying, trying his best to hold on to that position. He's playing probably one of the better operators to do just that. If he's got a crossfire, Jaeger with that carbine, really good at melting people who are going to be rushing around that corner. Yeah. So it looks like it's going to be an Archives take, though Diffuser is down and nobody from Empire seems all that interested in going to get it. Mm. I mean, I'm sure they'll get it at some point. They just dispatched someone to get it. There you go. So they've had someone go over and try to get it now. At least it certainly looked that way. First encounter is going to be Rips inside of Archives through the wall. He's got Cry in there as backup. Rips losing more HP than anybody else. Joystick will find the very first Goomine. There's going to be many on the way. Cryon holding on to an ADS suggests to me that he's anticipating needing to ADS juggle. 
and possibly try and stave off some of these projectiles or throwables. In this situation, very dangerous. Yes. This angle play is crazy. Neither of these teams are willing to fully commit, but Joystick will be the one to fully commit the first time and take out Kryon. Excellent job, and that has eliminated the crossfire, not just the player of Jaeger, which leaves Rips in a Attack very tricky situation. Here. He is going to refrag, though, which is fantastic for him. Taking out Karzeka, his position given away, he will be forced to drop, and Joystick will be down in the process of time to take him out. All the while, Shepard from the main hallway will take down Corey and put his team in a much better spot. Rips has also eaten a lot of damage before he fell down, so Empire are in the driver's seat looking to push into the B-bomb site. They don't have full control though because KS is still in a position to deny that entry using his gas canisters. Shepard just creeping on up will find Rips and mock it in a tough spot. To Not a lot of time left for Empire to work with here, but mock it. Not a lot either. Ooh, good transfer from KS on a joystick. Immediately traded off. Vale doesn't have very much HP. Shock is there. And from the back, Vale will need to push on in. But it's the Buck with the big two piece to give Empire the round after. They grab that diffuser down as well. And Empire doing everything that they need to do. It's good that Empire that they have the depth on fragging capabilities. I know that Joystick often gets touted for his plays on, on Ash and on Jaeger, but I actually think Karzeka is overlooked and slept on on that roster. I'm Incredible game sense, great aim, and good mechanics. I think another person who's really overlooked on Empire is Shock. Shockwave, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Shock has some amazing rounds, especially on Buck. He's one of those players that can really make the C8 his own. You know, something about the C8 that's kind of interesting is that while, yeah, okay, it's recoil makes a lot more sense now that you can see it clearly represented by the, re, uh, you know, the actual when you're spraying. They didn't actually change the recoil too much. I don't think it got the recoil itself got buffed, but the visual representation of the recoil is less, a lot less shaky when you're shooting Buck these Defenders, days. Anyway, your bombs from being the C8 is still very action. polarizing. When you play with that gun and you shift to something that has less recoil, it can sometimes be a little bit distracting. And that's what makes people who play Buck some, some of us, you know, really specialists. And uh, I think that's something that Shock is good at. And I think that's something that it's always nice to see him play. Now, Empire have managed to put themselves up one round. I think that's a big part of that is because they got those two rounds in a row on the first half and uh, managing to win their first armory attack. They've managed the same thing that Mocket did in the first half. So even if Mocket win this second armory defense, Empire in a good spot, all things considered. Now, the way that Empire chose to attack that last round through the offices and archives could have easily gone mock its way. A lot of it came down to that initial crossfire between the Jaeger and the Legion in archives and fountain, and the fact that mock had ended up losing that. It could have been a straight up win for them. And we saw Rips frag back after he lost uh, the Jaeger by fountain, but that was, that was really what uh, gave Team Empire the edge in that round. I absolutely agree. So, what's Mocket bringing to the table this time around they didn't have last time? How can they right the ship and not allow Empire to just bulldoze in again and completely command that site? Well, for Empire, they're stacking up effectively in the same place as before. It does look like it's going to be an Archives take here. But there's not really all that much that's happening for the time being. It's a lot of drone work coming out from Empire as Mocket. Instead of having the Legion hug the wall, they'll have Cory there on the Pulse instead. Decent information as the Pulse is very vital, or very vital, not just for Mocket, but also possibly getting taken down by a grenade, which is in the hands of Shockwave. If Shepard can toss an EMP in there and clear out the ADS, providing Crying can't juggle an ADS, that could spell the end of the Pulse. And there you go, beautiful coordination as the EMP lands, just as the frag grenade does as well. I want to touch on something, because it happened last round, it's happened again this round. Why is that wall unreinforced, and what's with the rotation? It's the second time in a row, and both times it has been really bad for the defenders in my mind. Well, did Empire not swap those and have the left panel unreinforced and the right panel reinforced? No, it was it was the same panel. Was, the was same it the panel. same panel? Yeah, it was the same panel. They've done this twice in a row now. It, it's really confusing. Um, but it has worked against the defenders both times now. Shock's gonna get the second kill for Empire. That's by Sandwich. 
Looks like it might have been from the window. Yeah, it was. It was uh, somebody on sandwich trying to peek Shock. And there's a second for Shock. Who's peeking him? Who's peeking Shock? You shouldn't be peeking Shock. It's a mistake to peek Shock. And he's the one racking up the headshots right now, putting his team in a great spot. Mock it with a two versus five. And they have plenty of time on Empire's side. There's another one for Empire. Shepard going to take out Rips, and it's just up to Cryon. He's going to get the first kill for his team, but the Diffuser planted. He'll be forced to rotate downstairs to gain a better position. Drone will call out his position, though, and the pre-fire for Karzeka will land the kill. Empire take the round, and quite dominantly so. Great drone positions. You saw throughout the course of the matchup that Empire was stashing drones as if there was going to be a run on them at the store. Mm -hmm. You know, they're... Uh... If Empire's saving strats, they sure aren't saving drones, let's put it that way. Yeah, I. the way that they're playing with their drones is pretty excellent. Empire's information game, their information gathering, is one of the stronger suits, I think, for, for them as a team. They always know what they're getting themselves into. Um, overall, though, I have to say, I feel as though Mocket is setting themselves up for failure on their archives and office defense. That hole that they open up uh, as a rotation into offices from archives, I like the idea of it, in theory, because it sounds cool. If you could make it work, that's fantastic. But I feel as though it is one of those things that is clearly not working for you. It didn't work the first time. It did manage to get Rips a kill. We have to give it that credit. Yep. Rips got a kill through that angle, but it left him so very exposed. He ate a lot of damage and he was forced to rotate off the site because of that hole. You don't have to do that to yourself as a team. But. All said and done now, two attempts at defending Armory, Mocket can't make it work. They aren't sure what the problem is, and they're going to go to ventilation instead. I really wish we could have seen what the Buck was doing outside of uh, outside of Archives holding the vent's window. Uh, I saw it. Ventilation he, window. He got two kills, right? As, Shock, yeah. as Shockwave got two kills on it. But I wanted to know exactly what Mocket was doing to put themselves in harm's yeah. way. So the first the first one was in Sandwich, because someone was trying to peek seconds, ventilation four, from Sandwich, as right. people who's, often who's do. Who's peeking Shockwave? Who's peeking Shockwave? They were. The second one, I'm pretty sure, was somebody peeking him from small office. You know, you can vault on uh, the desk and you get that angle, and you can kind of get the angle onto the, the archives window. Right. I think that's what was going on there. Either that, or it was by small office. It was somebody playing inside a small office area. And I'm pretty sure that's what the second one was. Yeah. That opened up the site, really, first team. And on top of that, though, I mean, something we didn't even touch on is there was a light presence in Archives that last round. Barely any defense from Mocket. I don't know if the castle actually just got the... He might have. He might have gotten the breaching charge. No, he nope. did not. No, the only part that he doesn't decide to pre-fire at is where Karzek is going to be able to open that wall up. And of course, things will play out very similarly to the previous two rounds. Empire's focus is going to be on the Archives side of things because you're going to try to take control of that first before you're able to translate your success to the site. If you stall out up top, then that doesn't bode well for your ability to push that main floor. You got both the Buck and the Zofia in positions where they could decide to pinch in. But you're going to rely on some gadget destruction. That's where the EMP comes in. Also, the Bandit peaks wide, and whole oh, Rips is rewarded, taking out the hottest player of Empire this game in Shockwave. And it'll silence your top fragger. Rips is looking for yet another as Veil vale takes out Joystick, and well, Empire not able to really do much on this entry as their entry isn't even really successful. Look at how hard it is to hit that bandit. Oh, Rips will grab his second on a Karzeka. Beautiful shot through the doorway all the way towards that east balcony. And Empire finding a minute and 30 is not a lot of time to do too much with. Shepard will try to keep it even. As he eliminates Corey, crying taking some damage too, but Empire are in dire straits. Dire Straits and only two players up. Brian is down on the floor, but he will be picked up. Seemingly just a reset in sight. Looks like they're going to open up the castle barricade, give himself a little bit more control on the main hallway, but it's not really going to mean very much in terms of uh, actual presence. There is nobody exposed to that castle being broken. Castle by the bathroom door is going to really pay for itself time and time again as uh, there's no Excaros left on Scyther. I don't know if Shepard has the breaching charges still that he was running earlier. I would imagine that he probably... No, he's got a Claymore instead. So the breaching charges were on Karzeka in that case, and maybe Joystick if he didn't run the Claymore, but hard to tell because Joystick is currently in the grave and will need to come back. Attackers this is just going to have to be a frag fest now for Empire. If you look at the health on Mocket, it's definitely doable. Three members of the team of the remaining four have all lost almost half of their HP. 
But Chaos is still going to have those toxic canisters. Scyther wandering in through customs. We'll look to try to find somebody playing off site, but Mocket reading this correctly, and they're just going to be very static, very conservative. The Jaeger gets absolutely punished by Kryon. Scyther loses very little. Oh, it's a double from Scyther, but he's going to have to hurry. He's got two seconds, and he's not going to be able to find them, even if he had been able to take out Chaos, hugging the wall towards the entry point for the final member of Empire. He wouldn't have been able to get through that barbed wire fast enough to grab the second, and that was Mocket securing their victory in about 90 seconds to start that round. Yeah, certainly a nice try there from Empire, but Mocket managing to lock it out. It's good that they finally realized they can't defend Armory very well, and they decided to make their rotation to Vent. They're going to have to go back to Armory, though, because their other options are Customs and Tellers at this point, and obviously, I don't... They're not really keen to go to those sites. Which stands to reason. So, going back up to Armory, we've seen an Office Archives attack from Empire two times around. But, here's the kicker. Looks like they're setting themselves up for an Armory wall take. They have brought the Thermite. Now, the Thermite can be used from Offices into Archives, certainly. Um, it's a really useful tool for that. Um, but, I feel as though, having used the same strategy twice, Empire going to try and mix things up a little bit. We'll see. Some teams, when they're seeing success on a particular strategy, will try to commit to it fully. Just repeat, repeat, repeat until it doesn't work anymore. Um, and that could be Team Empire, but I don't see it as likely. They're usually pretty good at making the necessary adjustments. We'll find out. You can see that Mocket have all five players take up in office right now. So they are expecting an office take. And if it's not an office take, it could be a problem. They've even reinforced that wall that well, they hadn't been reinforced. To be fair, we've seen three pushes from Empire, and none of them have come on the Armory side of things. Right. Eventually, it's going to happen, right? Because you can't just continuously go to the same side time and time again. This is probably the round where it's going to happen. Yeah. If you prevail on Armory here, then you put yourself on match point with Mocket having two choices. Go back to Armory, where they would have lost three times at that point, or roll the die on Customs or Bathroom. We'll see. It's a risk for Mocket for the amount of investment they put on the office side, and it might just be another office attack from Empire. If you're a fan of Empire, I'm sure you're hoping that they're going to drone this out <laughs> and it, try to go for something else. It's pretty incredible, but I mean, it makes sense that it makes sense that Mocket would heavily fortify that side of things because it definitely looks like it's going to be exactly the same. It's going to be yet another one. Yeah, because. I mean, they're setting. They're looking to set uh, shock up on the ventilation window. They've got control of these stairs. They've already started working their way into offices. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they if they commit to this. But it is dangerous, and it's going to cost Empire at least early on as Rips will take down Karzeka as the Zofia finally eliminated. And the the real success story behind Empire is also falls a lot on the Karzeka's calls. Yeah. So with Karzeka gone, he's going to be calling and have a, actually a better vantage point here, but you're going to lose the breaches on the Zofia. You're going to lose a good gun. You're going to lose a great body in terms of just being able to frag. And then you're also going to lose the disruption that comes with it. So those ADSs from Kryon will need to be burned primarily by the EMPs. This Rips is going to get a little bit out of joint as he looks too wide and expecting a joystick push. Well, there you go. Oh, oh but Rips takes out Kryon. Oh, no. And that was crying at full health. So Rips is still very, very low. Not necessarily a good trade on Mocket's side of things. Yeah, it was definitely a good exchange for Joystick, even though he didn't get anything done himself. Uh, Rips doing more damage to his team than Joystick possibly could have done, considering Rips is so low. And Shock's still on this prime vantage point on Vent. You'd have to imagine that Mocket is going to know that he's there and not be able to push on up. Scyther sees what little is left of the lesion and knows with how low HP he is, it's pretty much one shot. He's going to miss every single one onto the lesion. He's got one reinforcement next to him in terms of the lesion, so he can stay pretty just sitting behind that. But look at Mocket. They are just waiting for Empire, who are currently mid-stall. Not a lot of time to go and an excellent opportunity for a smoke to go out. The, sh the floor shot beneath where your typical exothermite charge would go means that your uh, exothermic charge will go, means that there's likely going to be somebody here to stop it. Corey waiting for the advance through the opening. Oh, Shockwave just grabs Rips, and then will get the Evil Eye as well, which will prompt the Maestro of Veil to get off of his gadgetry. There's still going to be an Evil Eye staring directly at the main entry point for Empire. 
Veil gets Shepard, and now Scyther are very, very low. You've still got the Valkyrie below, who has a C4-4 denial, and you'll see he takes a big chunk of Shockwave's HP away with KS and Veil doing the rest of the cleanup work on site. Mock it, a triumphant comeback so far, as they are two for two on the previous sites, but will now have to go somewhere outside of the norm, and we'll see what they can do, as both of these teams are sitting tied up, and we will need the full 12 rounds yet again. So as expected from the beginning of the round, if Empire were to commit to the same strategy they've used every single time on Armory, it's likely not to be successful, because Mocket stacked so much utility on holding Office Archives. Every single one of the Mocket players were focused on Office Archives, and while Empire put up a heck of a fight, and they maybe came close, uh, they were unable to out in the end. The Evil Eye is still in play. The C4s from below still in play. Overall, that was definitely a surefire mock around as soon as Empire fully committed to clearing from office to archives. Would have been nice to see them make it a little bit of adjustment there. They had the Thermite. They had the uh, potential for an armory take. And because a lot of the utility that was invested in the office archive side from Mocket was immovable, it was an opportunity. Empire just didn't seize it. That was a great evil eye as well from Fail that we saw all the way down by half wall. It's got just a straight line of sight to exactly where you expect the Thermite to be able to open up that wall. And because of that, you can have somebody calling on the team providing what your numbers are on Mocket's side of things. And then Veil can literally just gun down that entire straight with the LMG. And there's nobody that's going to be able to get in there doing his best Gandalf impression. You shall not pass. So, all things considered, Mocket had a really good two-step strategy. Number one, be aggressive, force them to commit, and then maybe have the Valkyrie below if need be to try and pick somebody off. But if that fails, your failsafe is the fact that you have a Maestro still available over on the Armory wall. And a lot of that is because Empire just did not commit to trying to push Armory at all. Yeah. So you basically had an entire site where you could just sit and really not sweat any vertical pressure. There was nobody below, even though there was a buck from Shockwave. Nothing like that. So ultimately, negligence from Empire to realize that Mocket would respond by stacking bodies up on Armory that could battle back when you decided to push Archives. It's good information gathering here from Joystick alone, trying to clear his way into Archives. That castle barricade is going to slow things down. The melee hole is just there as a distraction to give away the position of anyone pushing Archives. And uh, Joystick, now known to his enemy, Cryon will fall back to Fountain. Meanwhile, Vale by the main hallway is going to die to Shepard. A very aggressive position there from Vale to give himself away so early. That's the Maestro, so those evil eyes locked in place. And since it's pretty early in the round, they're probably not in the ideal position. No, and you, as Mocket, you got to fall back at this point. Losing your Maestro this early is pretty damaging. It's going to be your, informa your primary information gatherer on defense and the best gun by far. And the other person who was able to save the round for you last time in conjunction with KS. Brian's also going to go down there to Scyther. KS inside of Archives looking for the fight, and he will find it, but oh, under commits. And he's not able to find the follow-up. He still has gas canisters, could clean this up. But it looks like it went far, and Shock is going to just barely get out of that alive. Uh, under commitment in the initial engagement there from KS, and then over commitment in the follow-up. He needs to move on. He's gonna get a little bit shaky there. You can see his mouse moving all over the screen. He's looking for the fight, but he's panicking and he will give away the kill to Shepard, leaving just rips in the one versus four. With so much time on Team Empire's side, it's gonna be difficult for rips to clutch this out. They didn't drone him though. As you saw, it went right past him and didn't notice where the mute was positioned. And because of this, that's a freebie on the site. They're looking for yet another. I think he hears that the Zofia of Karzeka is not too far away, but he doesn't suspect Karzeka will have moved, and Empire will go on a match point with a beautiful play from Karzeka and starting it off with the Buck of Shockwave as well, being as strong as he was. KS traded out a lot of late round utility to try and slow Empire down as they transition towards that late round onto the Buck. He used two toxic canisters to try and take the Canadian operator out and could not secure it, and then ended up getting felled as he tried to rotate out of Workshop. That's the value he places on the can uh, the Canadians. But it was poorly placed. He could have gotten that kill. We are really valuable. Yeah. See, that's what I was not. There's for. not that many of us. 
Really? How many millions of Canadians are there? We There are about as many Canadians as there are Poles. Really? Mm-hmm. Poland has, I think Poland is like a million lower than Canada. Hmm. It was actually pretty surprising. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not terribly surprising. I mean, well, when you when you consider the fact that Canada is like 13 times the size of Poland. Yeah, but then it becomes surprising. It's like 80 percent ice. That's true. So that's very true. No. All right. So going on to a defense of Vent. Last time we were here, the only time we were here for Mocket, and they were successful. This is actually this was the saving grace site for Mocket. It's where the sh the tides started to turn on Mocket's defensive half. And it could be where they solidify that draw. That's ex this is exactly the outcome that they're looking for here. It's not possible for Mocket to win any longer. Best they can hope for is the 6-6. Six, six. Overall, the setup, you can see they're putting a lot more emphasis on the top floor than they had when they were defending Tellers. You, uh, I mean, last time, when they were defend defending Tellers, they, they were trying to hold Office and uh, Fountain, but not even Archives or Armory, which makes sense. Okay, uh, for a second there, I thought it was Joystick. It was Karzeka. I got. I, I don't know if, who else jumped on that one, but I certainly did. Karzeka pushing his way into East Stairs is able to get an early frag. I'm not entirely sure where. I'm looking for it right now, but uh, he got the frag, and uh, he'll put his team in an advantage as Rips goes down. Not a good start for Mock. The Germans being outplayed by the Russians, at least for the time being. And say goodbye to uh, say goodbye to your heart breach denial as well. Given the fact that you, uh, given the fact that you no longer have that bandit there to slow things down, and there's no mute being ran from Mocket this time either, so looks like the bandit went down to a pre-fire through the window. Yeah, I've seen that before. Good job to uh, Karzeka seizing the opportunity. And this lineup from Empire has not really moved. You have lots of utility in spades. You have the ability to dislodge any gadgets that you might have, and that's exactly what Shepard is going to do with those EMPs. Empire really hates attacking from CCTV. I don't know if you've noticed this, but uh, they do not want to attack from anywhere but office. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a ventilation defense, but at the same time, this is the same attack strategy that they've used every time attacking the top floor to clear out the top, to, whether to clean out roamers or to attack the side, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually very surprised with how little we've actually been able to see at a market to stop this, given the fact they know that Empire's attack is, and entry is basically the same thing every single time. Well, it's going to be a smoke inside of the bathroom to deny the Excaros on the A wall. Good job to KS managing that. The shotgun from Shock will net the kill, and Empire now has full control of bathroom. So Kryon's trying to fight back, but uh, control is still lost. Shock on the floor could be secured, but it seems unlikely as Empire continues to rack up kills. Kryon now the last one with so little HP. He's going to have to ace it, and there's a whole minute for Empire to plant the diffuser and solidify this round as they wait things out. Kryon will get the second one. Joystick with some really poor cover on the hallway Attack there, but his position given away, Kryon is going to have to rotate now. At the top of these stairs appears to be Shock. Nope, in fact, correction, it's Shepard. His position given away, though, as Kryon tries to get that kill, he came very close. It could have been potential one versus two, but now Kryon's stuck in a bit of a crossfire. He has to worry about the east stairs. It's very dangerous as he continues to advance. Shepard eventually comes down those east stairs. Empire will take the round and the match. Seven to five. Russian machine never breaks. Mm -hmm. And there you have it. Empire, their fourth win. And ultimately, a very strong performance. Mocket were good today. Better than we have seen from them in most of their matches, but it's true. Empire were better. And I think that really shows. So the team that is brand new to Pro League will now <laughs> sit atop the standings and the first time for most of these players here and in unfamiliar territory for a lot of them, first overall. Yeah, Team Empire really starting to build up their namesake at the beginning of this season for their first ever season. Building an empire, dare I say it? Yes. There you go. As you said, living up to their namesake. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what you were getting at. That is what I was getting at, yeah. I just don't know what subtlety is. Let's try not to be too deliberate. If I knew what subtlety was, I wouldn't have bought these glasses. I like those glasses on. Yeah, but they're not subtle. They go with the suit as well. Thank you. I match all my clothing to each other. Yeah. We match sweaters today. We, we have. The, we, we didn't try. Yeah, we just did it. I told you I was going to wear a sweater. We said He did say sweater, but I brought the blue one. He brought the blue one. It worked out. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the way it works. Yeah. All right. So we have a couple of questions for Karzeka when we bring up the interview. We wanna, I have a couple things at the top of my mind. Yeah. I think the way that they entered every single time through offices, pushing into archives, and yet 
there was just really nothing that Mocket could seem to do to counter it. And a lot of that, honestly, it falls on Mocket because Empire's pushes were almost formulaic on a number of those on a number of those takes, they didn't really deviate that much from the same overarching strategy. There was no CCTV slash monitors presence. There was no armory presence. There was no vertical presence. You have a buck. And instead of putting them below, where do you put them? You just have them hang out on vents. I mean, you said it yourself, Russian machine don't bro don't break. And uh, if, it don't, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Yep. So all but one of the attacks that Empire pushed into that office area worked out. Right. Uh, other than that, I mean... It, I mean, I, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? It, it really was working for Empire. I think it's, I, you were absolutely right when you said it falls on Mocket, not being yes. able to successfully hold against that. I'm not, I'm not pointing any fingers at Empire. I think they did very well. I'm just I'm very surprised at how inefficient Mocket was at stopping it. They only had two glimpses of brilliance, and those were the two rounds they won. We'll bring up an interview with Empire, and some of the questions at the top of my mind will be able to be asked. Karzeka, great to see you again. I have a feeling that we might be interviewing you a couple times. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, first question for you. The way that Mocket was attacking through those first six rounds was incredibly unpredictable. Sometimes they would just go for broke and push on in, and other times they took a little bit longer. The very first round, they literally blitzed the site and got the plant down and beat you. In the second round, you answered it very successfully and stopped them. Between that first and second round, what goes through your mind, and how does your team change up their defense to predict what market is going to do and shut them down effectively. I mean, uh, we haven't practiced against uh, this kind of combo like Ink, uh, Dokoyebi, and uh, uh, and Blitz for a long time. But uh, after first round, uh, we were like, okay, we practiced with uh, Moki before, so we kind of knew that they did the same on the scrim. So the second way after they they won the first one, they just changed their. Uh, site of attack and we, we were just ready for that so we just kind of knew that gonna happen and we just knew what to do there now you also traded off uh joystick from the jackal over to the iq it was something that our colleagues were a little critical of in, in previous matches saying that the jackal wasn't really working out and while well, joystick didn't need to carry the team today because both you and shockwave had incredible contributions was the IQ pick for Joystick more to allow him to frag better? Was it simply because you figured that you needed the IQ for her gadget? What was the thought process behind that? I mean, we wanted to bring IQ. We kind of didn't need uh, smoke, so we just uh, went with IQ. I guess it was a good pick, but uh, I guess Joystick didn't feel well enough on IQ. He wasn't playing that for a long time, so uh, I think it will be okay in the future. We will work on that. <laughs> and uh, last question for you here. Every single attack, you came from the office side toward archives. You never attacked Armory. Were you surprised that Mocket didn't protect offices more or even better? And furthermore, why only go through offices every time? Why not attack Armory or CCTV? Uh, I mean, office, in our opinion, in this is the strongest uh, point of the map to work around. So uh, every time we attack from office, but we have some strats from the CCTV as well. But uh, we're still going with the office if we have a if we have a chance to go for it. And uh, it's easy for us to work around office, so we kind of always go there. So why, I don't uh, even know what to say anymore. <laughs> why uh, why show strats for CCTV and Armory when you know that you still have the six invitational qualifiers coming up where you can use your strats to guarantee your spot in Montreal, right? So, yep. uh, Congratulations once again. A massive victory. You now sit alone in first place in Europe. Pretty good, uh, pretty good climb after coming in from Challenger League. Anything to say to your fans, the viewers, your org sponsors, etc. at the end of this interview? Yeah, thanks a lot for the support. We appreciate it uh, very much. And thanks to Team Empire for providing us a perfect boot camp. Yeah, that's it. Good luck in your matches Have this weekend.